You're with the Foamy Heads. After the foam. <laughs> so, we decided to do an extra segment. <laughs> extra beer. <laughs> Well, it's still uh, uh, Mitch here, Rich, and DJ. DJ. Hello. So uh, we just had our three brewery beers. This is probably going to air on a Thursday instead of a Tuesday just for an extra tidbit. Mm. This is After the Foam. After the Foam is anything that we experienced that was a little more that we need to talk about, yeah. experience, share, you know, whatever we felt interesting to talk about. You poured so, something. Though. I did. Yeah, tell us about that because, like, how this fits into so, the stuff that we bought. We ordered the brewery beers, and it's from a friend in California. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just gonna do first names, no last names. Uh, we do want to talk to this guy more because he wrote about uh, uh, beers all, all, all for years. Mm -hmm. I, I, there's not a good way to, for me to put it because I'm kind of drunk. <laughs> but thanks, the brewery. And uh, thank you to Jason, who provided these beers for us, helped us get our hands yeah. on these. So uh, when when uh, Jason's a, Jason seems to be a good guy because yeah. we ended up finding <laughs> we had like we so my brain of, stopped. No, that's totally <laughs> fine. This is something that I wanted to say, yeah. though. System so when down. we found we bought we found the 2010 you just found yeah, the yeah, 2010 yeah. black tuesday on a whim and you purchased it indeed and you know you were a little nervous because you had oh, never yeah. met anybody on on you had never purchased a beer well, before on ebay and there's hmm. always that chance that it's going to come out and it's not going to be well, well, whatever. That i did i did uh well yeah i did buy one beer that was our first 2010 black tuesday by tuesday yeah and that was from california and then on eBay, I talked to an individual, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so we're just going to that. tell eBay about this. No, no, eBay doesn't know who we are. eBay doesn't. Know who <laughs> we you are. need to bleep all of these. <laughs> anytime you say this company, but this empty can came in as a bonus, uh -huh. and so now we're getting to experience this empty can. That's right. Today. The uh, empty can is. Let me look at it real quick. I always get the name of the can wrong. Flip Fly Flows by Monkish. Monkish Brewing. I don't know anything about those guys, but from what I understand, they're a West Coast brewery. They are a West Coast. So, okay, we're located in Nashville, Tennessee. Our main IPA kind of cult, you would say, like Dude, heavy flu. Uh, yeah, a uh, heavy. Uh, shit. What was <laughs> the word I was looking for? Juicy, they're, they're, the heavy-hitting IPAs is probably Bearded Iris and yes. Southern Grist in our area. That's probably correct. By far. Yeah. Uh, cultish to an extent because yeah. 2,000 or so people show up to like line up for the triple IPAs. Mm -hmm. They're hipsters. And, yeah. You can say it. I mean, Nashville's full of it. <laughs> <laughs> they're full of it and full of themselves. Yeah. Hipsters and us. Yes. The... Uh, uh, don't get me started on traffic, even though I started the conversation on traffic. Yeah, but uh, Flip Fly Flows by Monkish is apparently the exact same kind of extent or uh, thought of our bearded iris movement and southern grist mm -hmm. movement here in Nashville. Okay. And people will line up out the door, around the block, and for however long until the product sells out. And so, we got this, and we got this one as a bonus beer. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, he apparently had it available and uh, provided it for us, so we're gonna try it. It looks I've, very juicy. It does. It's one of those hazies that yeah. are popular today. I'm very interested um, in trying that. I have my own opinions about hazy beer. Anyone have their own opinion about hazy beer? I know DJ has an opinion about hazy IPAs. Mm -hmm. I enjoy them very much, but technically, if you clarified them, they would taste exactly the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Somehow, hazy IPAs became all the rage, yeah. when hazy, in reality, it's technically just... Technically, hazy is lazy. Yeah, hazy <laughs> is lazy. That's exactly what I said to Jason, man. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about it. I was like, hazy is lazy. <laughs> Because it's just a filtering process. Yeah, and you put gelatin in, uh -huh. and it weighs down the particles of the, the oats, and uh, it's right there. I want to see the can, Mitch. Yeah, here you go. Thank you. I want to see what your can. Flip fly flows. Later. 
<laughs> Double Dry Hopped IPA, 8.6% ABV. That's a good number. I think, you know, if you're going to drink uh, if you're going to drink an Imperial IPA, 8%, 9% is Just a good demolished one. Demolished your entire palate. You can't taste anything else the rest of the day. Uh, you I'm guys full disclosure just for finished your your coffee beer right before drinking a, a fresh hazy IPA. You're wrecked. You're I don't think <sighs> Mitch is going to taste much on this <laughs> beer no, at this point. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some water. I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? What do you get on the nose? It is extremely fresh. Yeah. Um, I don't know what flavors I get on the nose, but. I know when I smell this beer, I go, this tastes oh, like shit. a a very, it's extreme, it, it's juicy smelling. Um, now, okay, keep beer to the iris in mind. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're kind of competing smell, here. Yeah, but I don't smell the beer, and we've talked about this before. Yes. The bearded iris taste. Uh-huh. Right, when you we say, this is a bearded iris beer. It may have yes. a different hot profile, whatever. It may be really juicy, but this still has that... Beard Irish smell, that beard Irish taste. I don't pick up on that smell in this beer. It looks exactly like a bearded Irish IPA. It really it, does. It doesn't smell like one to me. It did not have the same head a bearded Irish beverage has, okay. in my opinion. Okay. I, I feel like when I pour a bearded Irish head, I get about at least a quarter inch or more of kind of like that foamy head mm -hmm. that I expect from them. And it has that smell and taste in the back of the throat. Yeah. I don't know what to expect from Monkish. This is the first Monkish I've ever had. I agree. I haven't, haven't, <coughs> had, I haven't had anything. These guys are based out of Torrance, California. So, and they obviously don't distribute to this area. We would have found them by now. Right. If they distributed in this area. But... Uh, they're a small brewery and tasting uh, over in L.A. Uh, Belgian-ish and IPA-ish beers is what they specialize in. So oh. DJ might appreciate this a little bit too. Okay, but um, yeah, I don't I don't smell the bearded iris flavor. I don't either in this IPA, but that doesn't mean I won't taste it. That's right. I'm gonna try it. All right, I'm gonna take a drink of water real quick and be right back, but. Let us know your thoughts. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, you go ahead, because I can talk on this beer forever. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right back. <laughs> DJ, have you had a sip yet? I have. What do you think about this beer? It is really nice. It I, is I'm, super tasty. I'm a little worried, because I still have a, a, some remnants of that coffee beer we had earlier. Um, but it is, it is quite nice, fruity. Mm -hmm. Like refreshing. Fruity is definitely what I get out of this beer. Almost a melon kind of flavor. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. It is, it's got a ton of flavor up front, and then it kind of disappears for a little bit, and then it kind of comes back after you're done with the sip. This is a very, I don't want to call it a complex beer because I don't think there's a ton of flavors going on in here. But it is super easy to drink. It is very flavorful, very tasty. In my opinion, it tastes exactly how it smells. Huh. Mitch needs to try this beer. But I, I know he's still trying to. I heard he's still this. kind of recovering a little bit from the uh, <coughs> the shot that he just finished his so. his Mocha Wednesday because DJ's not a fan of coffee beers, and he drank about half of his and then decided to donate the rest of his brewery mocha wednesday imperial stout to mitch and myself so we finished that but mitch decided at the last minute he was going to just down the rest of his beer really fast yeah. so i'm very curious on his palate whether or not he's going to be able to pick up on any flavors to be fair i was sipping that beer but because i'm not outside and enjoying myself like uh chill why yeah. I want to talk a beer. I don't want to just sip beer my yeah. whole time, you know. So I started uh, uh, throwing it back. <laughs> okay. Uh, to be honest, the Mocha Wednesday wasn't my favorite thing, so that's why I started throwing it back. Yeah. It's uh, uh you know, it woke me up for sure. Um, I'm, you know, we had three nineteen, close to nineteen yeah. percent beers, and I was just kind of, I'm feeling it. And Mocha Wednesday kind of tipped the scale with that bitter and mm. sweet profile a little much. So I'm kind of done with that and threw yeah. it back. 
Okay. So now I've had some water. I'm ready to attempt to gauge my next beer. There you go. In my current state. So, uh, so did we say the name of the beer yet? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we did. Monkish Flip by Bro- Floyd. Yep. Flows. Yep. Monkish. So, Jason, thank you for providing it. Absolutely. Shout out to you. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to list your last name yet, but I hope to have you on the show eventually. That would be so that much way fun. We can talk beers and just really get into it because uh, we shared similar views to hazy IPAs, mm. stouts, where, you know, even sours, kind of like that whole trend yeah. er, kind of like took over for whatever reason. We were just kind of like, that's whatever. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything yet, but it'd be fun to talk about, especially since we are stuck in the Bible Belt. And then get some West Coast flavor in here. So it, it'd be good. It'd be a really good time. Yeah. I'd love for us to talk about the beers we've got here and for him to talk about the beers they've got there. Um, we've got West Coast style. We've got, you know, mm, there's not really a Bible, Bible belt style, but is there anything that we, you would consider Tennessee style? kind of beer well i mean we've taken from the northeast we've taken from the west coast yeah but the thing about the thing about nashville in general is nashville has always been a kind of a melting pot of Mm -hmm. all different styles i mean like if you look if you go into downtown nashville your true natives or like your your people that live in nashville not your Mm. tourists right come in with cowboy hats and yeah the people on broad Nah. Yes, the people that live in Nashville that are just going downtown to hang out for a while, mm-hmm. they're the ones from all over. Like they say, right. they come from the north, they come from the west. So Tennessee has historically been a melting pot of all different kinds of people. And the interesting thing about that is that translates into the beer because we adopt certain styles of beer. Bearded Iris has adopted mm-hmm. the hazy IPA. And we yes. kind of made it our own a little bit. Sort of New England. In a sense that, you know, it's a typically a little bit juicier than other New England style IPAs. Right. You can have a hazy IPA. Yes. And you can have a juicy IPA and they'll look the same, but they'll taste completely different. Right. So, and then you have West Coast IPAs and you have breweries here that make that style as well. So I think it's kind of, there is no one style that Nashville or Tennessee or even the South in general is home to. Mm. We just are very good at taking other, you know, regions in the United States and kind of making them our own by just adding a little bit of flair to it or adding a little extra touch uh, to make it a a different variety of the same style of beer. Casserole is a casserole. Exactly. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. Um, I'm very curious because I want to do a sampling trade. West Coast to the Southeast, right? Southeast. Mm-hmm. That's us. Yeah, that'd be us. Like, we're right at the top of it-ish, depending. Mm-hmm. And it, it's curious because we've got a, just all sorts of different styles. We've got people from... San Diego setting up shop and succeeding New Heights. New Heights. Uh, love them. Yeah. They're awesome. Good guys. And they are constantly innovating. Mm-hmm. Not a day goes by or I guess week that I know what they're kind of <coughs> planning on. Mm-hmm. And then we've got our bearded iris. We've got Southern Grist. We've got people just mixing styles and just continually churning what kind of craft beer is here. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Nashville is a fun place to be right now. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to go ahead and try this monkish. I yeah. think I've waited long enough. I think so, too. too. Long. I agree. DJ <laughs> says you've waited too long. <laughs> I'm at a good state right now. I should try this. <laughs> it smells fantastic, by the way. Um, you mentioned earlier, right, uh, what you thought it smelled, uh, what the nose was. Mm-hmm. You, I think it tastes exactly like how it smells, in my opinion. Oh, okay. I don't think you're going to get any of that bearded iris flavor 
uh, that smell, I think you're going to get exactly what you're mm. smelling, and which is it's juicy, it's sweet, it's mildly hoppy. I don't know if there's a ton of hop flavor to it. It's more citrusy than anything. That's what I'm getting out of it. But it's very pleasant, very mm. easy drink. When I smelled it, it's got floral notes and sweetness to it. Mm. When I tasted it just now, while yeah. you were talking, I couldn't resist any longer. <laughs> very citrus. Yeah. It's very juicy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's crazy. I really enjoy this beer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like anything I've had here. Yeah, surprisingly, because uh, I, I feel like Nashville has been a place for IPAs, mm -hmm. New England style, hazy, juicy, you know, the gamut. Yeah. But uh, I don't I don't know. I think the closest that comes to this would be Southern Grist. Maybe because there's not that bearded iris kind of aftertaste, not that uh, back of the throat kind of feeling fuzziness. OK, I don't, I, it's hard to explain. But it's definitely fruity, sweet, and a little bit bitter. Mm -hmm. It's not very. It's not very bitter. No. It's not a. It's not your typical IPA. It's, it's definitely juicier than expect. You know, it's definitely juicier, but it's not. Um, it's not hoppy. I, I don't think it's. DJ, is this a is this a beer you would consider to be hoppy and bitter, or is this more of a juicy flavor profile that's got some hop bitterness to it? Oh, it's definitely typical New England IPA, very hazy, a little bit, you know. I really wish that, that oat, I could oat type of flavor. Mm. Um, but I, this one's I find pretty light and and yeah. mellow, refreshing. Let's see if I can find anything on on Beer Advocate so or Rate Beer. I would dare say I would take this one out onto a boat. Oh, that'd be <laughs> good. I'm on a boat. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's a little, there's the light alcohol boat beers that are nice, but if you really want to start off and then lead to your destination, I would say this is the this one is the to, beer to start with. Yeah. And it's a, it's no wonder that I like this beer. I'm looking up the hop setter in this beer. Oh yeah. Lay it Galaxy on. hops immediately. Really? They're, yeah. Galaxy hops are the main one, which people at the table here know Galaxy hops are kind of my thing. And it's got Nelson Sauvin, which is really odd because I'm not a Nelson Sauvin hops guy, but it's secondary to the Galaxy hops, mm. which is absolutely my favorite. So I don't know. Maybe there's a combination there because the Galaxy hops are more huh. pillowy. They're more cloudy. Um, they're kind of more on the flavorful side. They're more for aroma and they're not necessarily for the taste. Uh, but there's a lot on the nose going on in this mm. beer. So I'm picking up on that as I'm drinking the beer. And then there's Nelson Sauvin hops, which are also kind of more of the same. They're not used. You know, the IBUs on Nelson Sauvin aren't very bitter. They don't definitely don't lean more towards the, the higher huh. end of the bitterness scale. So I think they're kind of being muted by the Galaxy hops, which are just a little bit stronger. But there's tons of juiciness going on in this IPA, and that's what I really like about this beer. I think you nailed it yeah. on what I'm tasting, but I'm completely ignorant to the brewing processes. Just saying. Uh, you I, should I, do a beer 101. There's probably a few viewers who are just kind of like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I'm one of those. Um, we do want to attempt a home brew of a sort. Yep. So if there's a particular home brew that you want us to do, we have the capability, right? Yep, absolutely. We've got I've got a setup at home that we could use. You know, if we wanted to brew a certain style of IPAs, we could choose our hops. We could choose, mm. you know, how we wanted to brew this beer. I think right off the bat, I think we should choose and kind of go from there yeah and uh was did dj get to try your uh, 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 uh chocolate the burning stout? midnight that we yeah made? i don't burning know if he midnight. tried that one maybe i don't think he did maybe it was a accidental <laughs> porter that turned into a stout because i brewed it incorrectly and it ended up being a 
very heavy. I don't remember what it was. It, it was ended up perfect. Being a, it ended up being a mean. porter, and it ended up because we <laughs> brewed it incorrectly. It ended up being a. It was like a thirteen or a fourteen percent chocolate porter that was like borderline. Oh, yeah. That ended up tasting phenomenal. So that was something. Yeah. I want to replicate it at least this later winter season. Okay. Uh, or try to. All right. And we may have to reach out to the other guy who like did things, but yeah. I don't know if he recorded anything or not. Nope. Okay, we won't reach out to yeah. him. Yeah. There's no point. But uh, it's either that we try to replicate that, or we go towards a different recipe. Let's try an IPA. Like Pliny? Have you had Pliny? I've had Pliny the Elder. We've all had Pliny the Elder. I think that's DJ's epitome of an IPA. That yeah. Is a West Coast double IPA. Yeah. It, to the point. Yeah. That it is. Uh, it is a testament to its species. <laughs> I that I feel like is the best way to homebrew is trying to reach that point because it's something we want that we can't get here. So if we can replicate it, we got it. You know what I mean? We will try. I will it, say, I'm sure it's not simple. Oh, yeah. It no, is 100 IBUs and 8%. It is very difficult to brew a beer of that <laughs> caliber because if you're going to brew an 8% beer, Ooh. your alcohol has to be a lot higher than the hops yeah. that you put in. So. It will be a very interesting task to see if we could do something with that high. That's why Pliny the Elder excels mm. because I don't know another beer that's got 100 IBUs in it that only has 8% because hops typically override the mm. alcohol percentage or something is extremely boozy and it's just hoppy enough, but the booziness overrides the hops. Interesting. Pliny the Elder doesn't taste like either one of them. It doesn't taste like an 8% beer, and it doesn't taste like a 100 IBU IPA. It's an huh. imperial IPA that's perfectly balanced across both hops and uh, IBUs. So that will be something interesting. I personally think the secret to it is you start with a regular, simple IPA, and you hone until that is right. Right. And then you can make a double of that, and then you can experiment to a triple of that, because if you don't mm. have a if you don't have a good IPA base, like mm. you don't have if you don't have an IPA you could drink at five or six percent. Yeah. The things that you couldn't drink about it at five or six percent are gonna be magnified at eight and ten You won't be able to enjoy it at eight percent. Right. Interesting. That's a good point. So I think that the, the key is to start with the simple beer first, get it get that right, and then expand and, okay. and basically go with less of less water more yeast you know higher alcohol content and mm -hmm. push it okay. do we want to spend our first half year doing like an ipa then a double mm -hmm. i think that'd be fair okay yeah and that'd be fun i think this is a good beer though this this sparks <laughs> some this this one beer it's amazing that this one juicy ipa sparked conversation on what is considered to be something that we are gonna probably brew in the near future because if i could brew an ipa that was just like this mm -hmm. maybe a little bit less juicy and a little bit hoppier right. that'll be a good start into where we're gonna go so uh, if we could We'll kind of document this from yeah. a time-to-time -time basis of what we've done, what we're doing, and kind of do a brewer segment. But um, I'm super looking forward to this yeah. and these segments, and we'll probably release them as we will. Yeah, I think this is a this is kind of good because every once in a while we have the after the foam, uh -huh. you know, kind of thoughts that we want to put on something, or in this case. We had three different beers from a brewery from, yeah. you know, shout out to Jason yes. that was able to get this beer to us. And he threw something in and it prompted us to say, hey, let's try this and 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 kind of provide our thoughts to it. So I think this would be an interesting segment to do as a as kind of a separate thing that you're going to see us mm -hmm. release from time to time. So Definitely. I think I think it's a good time. And there's really no um, format to this yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. It's just. 
it's trying a beer mm -hmm. testing it giving our thoughts on it um it, 10 15 minutes of yeah. discussion on it and i think it's a i think it's a good thing to just kind of release separately if you know if you're interested in in what we have to say and the beers that we've had and you want you want to know something about a beer that we had later and it could be something else it could be the same beer you know it could be additional mm -hmm. thoughts that we had something you know after the foam i think it's something that's really gonna be good for those people that want to learn a little bit more about the beer okay so um that sounds good we'll just kind of we're just gonna kind of try it out and we appreciate everybody uh joining with us tonight and we'll see you next time